Hi and welcome back to the film and TV channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And we have a movie review today, which uh, was getting rave reviews. Uh, this one from various sources. I'll tell you about those in a moment. So uh, it was something I was looking forward to watching because the storyline seemed quite quirky. I like quirky films, as you know. So today we're going to look at 139 minutes long, this one. You know, I don't particularly like long films. Uh, it's not usually bode well, but uh, there are exceptions, of course. A 15 certificate. I'm going to have a look at everything, everywhere, all at once. There you go. There's an interesting title. Uh, it's class is a good is a good uh, thing. Abs an absurdist comedy drama. Absurdist. I've never, I've never heard that one before. Absurdist comedy. I've heard the word, but not in a uh, to describe a film. Written and directed by Dan Quan and Daniel Shinert, collectively known as Daniels. Yeah, well, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes audience. Joe Public, 4.6 out of 5. Bold 12, guys. That's uh, 9.2 out of 10, of course. Internet Movie Database, not far behind. <coughs> Excuse me. 8.7 out of 10. Joe Public. That doesn't sound bad, does it? That's uh, that's quite a lot of reviews as well. There's over 20,000 people gave this 10 out of 10. <laughs> Am I saying 20,000 people over a wrong? Uh, possibly, yes, because I don't agree with 10 out of 10s, as you know. But uh, hey, there's there's no nothing so nothing so odd as folk, is there? So let's let's take let's discount that 20,000 and odd uh, 10 out of 10s. So we've got still got 25,794 who scored it between six and nine. And just 1,855 only that scored it between two and five. There are a number one out of ten, there's some one out of tens as well. So, if you look at that, them two figures, that's 93% what I call positivity rating. They've scored it at least six between six and nine. So, hey, this bowls well, doesn't it? The film stars Michelle Yo, Stevens Hu, Ki Hu Kwan. Jenny Slate, Harry Shum Jr., James Hong, and Jamie Lee Curtis is in this as well. And it follows a Chinese-American woman. I didn't recognise Jamie Lee Curtis in all fairness. The plot follows a Chinese-American woman, Yo, being audited by the Internal Revenue Service. Sounds exciting so far. Who discovers that she must connect with parallel universe versions. I'm not a big fan of parallel universes. If you watch my Marvel stuff and multidimensional stuff. Uh, must connect with parallel universe versions of herself to prevent a powerful being from causing the destruction of the multiverse. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go with that it sounded interesting to me so we've seen the public's opinion that's quite positive isn't it it's not always right that the critics agree is it but uh, let's have a look at the critics all so rotten tomatoes critics uh yeah 96 percent 96 percent of 283 critics were positive on this and it gets an average rating of wait for it 8.7 out of 10 on rotten tomatoes i mean that it must be it must be uh you know like, yeah, it must be a super, super film, this, wasn't it? That's 271 fresh, but there are 12 rotten, so there's 12 rotten uh, views on this one, but uh, 271 fresh. And the consensus, led by an outstanding Michelle Young, yeah, she does a good enough job. Everything Everywhere All at Once lives up to its title with an expertly calibrated assault on the senses. Uh, yes, it's certainly an assault on the senses. I will go along with that as well. The other critic site we'll look at, Metacritic. Uses an average again, uh, 81 out of 100, so a little bit less, but hey, uh, this is impressive, isn't it? 81 out of 100, that's based on 53 critics. 47 were positive, 6 were mixed, which leaves 0 for negative. So again, you know, it's, this, this is unbelievable stuff, really. Uh, 50 to 100, it's rates, so the lowest it got was 50, and 100, you got 100 out of 100. There you go. Uh, Variety's Peter De Brugge, though. He only gave it 50. He said he was a bit alone, though. There's not many. That was the lowest score. Was, uh, they're all high after that. He said everything everywhere is ultimately too much of a good thing. A novel idea driven to the point of exhaustion. Okay. The playlist, Robert Daniels. He scored it 91, so I didn't want to pick out any of the 100 out of 100 because I don't agree with them, do I? But playlist Robert Daniels said, In everything, everywhere, all at once, a dizzying and aching bit of popcorn entertainment. In fact, Yo has never been better. Well, I can't, I can't disagree with the actual acting and Yo's performance in this. I think it was all well and good, but what about my thoughts? Well... I'm, sure, I'm not sure what to say with this guy. It's because I've done two films now in two days. Uh, this is the second one. And the first film I watched was uh, Firestarter. 
yesterday, which the review will be out there. And yeah, it's this is a, you know both these films that and this. I'm at odds with everybody else. Uh, I'm in the minority on, on both of these. I mean, I watched Firestarter and I loved it, um, but it didn't do very well elsewhere. And you got to guess it, aren't you? Obviously, uh, I watched this, and obviously everyone loves it. Well, most people love it. Uh, and I didn't like it. I thought, I know, I was very disappointed. I mean, for, for me, this is the sort of film I would enjoy. Uh, quirky, sci-fi, uh, adventure, but a good quirky story, you know, multi-universes, different things happening. It looked perfect for me. But I just found it all very, very messy and all very hard to follow. And it just, it just really turned me off to the actual film. I mean, the constant mix. One of the things I sort of lived with that was annoying, but at least I lived with it, it was a constant mix of subtitles in English yeah, without any real, for me, rhyme or reason to it. You know, the, the people would be talking in English one minute and then all of a sudden switch to Chinese or Mandarin, whichever whichever, um, whichever language it was talking. I wasn't too sure, in fairness, guys. Um but that was annoying, but that was bearable. That was okay. That didn't ruin the film for me. It was just the total time shifting and shifting dimensions and multiverses uh, that was happening, and you had three different things on the screen at once, which was quite quite clever at first. But yeah, I just got really, really, really frustrated with it all. So rather than find it fascinating, which a lot of people seem to do, I just found it frustrating. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, it's got the vibe for me of a lot of different types of films, a lot of time time travel, time shift, whatever way you want to call it. But obviously it was left me with a feeling of uh, 12 Monkeys Meets the Matrix, although it's 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 basically uh, a dysfunctional family drama with multidimensional adventure thrown in and switches, etc. But it did say for some reason I just I just felt Twelve Monkeys and Matrix, uh, which I enjoy both those films. Don't get me wrong, I like a good a good time shift film like you know those even even one you have to think about a little bit, and you certainly have to think about this one a little bit. But uh, yeah, it just at the end of the day, as I said, it was basically a dysfunctional family that could obviously improve itself and obviously all right the actual side of actually saving the universe came into it but at the end of the day it was just about making everything right with the family which is okay but it's just a weird way of going about it and I, you know you know i suppose that's what people like about it because it's different but i just just didn't work for me guys i just didn't like it I mean, it was long, as I said, uh, almost two hours, 20 minutes. All right, take the credits out. You're probably talking two hours, 10, two hours, 15 minutes. But if they, even if they cut 45 minutes out of it, I would have still found it a bit silly and monotonous. Uh, and as I said, boring. I got a bit bored with it. Uh, there are a couple of actually of short sequences of, uh, or some short sequences featuring a planet with no life. So she couldn't, she couldn't transform into a, in someone, one another, you know, herself on another planet because there's no life on the planet. It's just a couple of rocks. But obviously they're communicating by obviously mind. Uh, but we saw the subtitles on the screen. And in all fairness, these two rocks were chatting on the edge of a ravine on this planet. And that the film would have been no worse uh, than if I'd watched The Rocks for over two hours. <laughs> In all fairness, I just I was that interest, lack of interest in it that I could say it wouldn't have been any it wouldn't have been any worse if they just had the two rocks for two hours ten minutes chatting to each other. At least we've got some nice scenery, so that you know for me it wouldn't have made a lot of difference. So. There you go. Uh, not impressed, guys. Let me. You have to let me know what you think. I'm not going to mark it because I'd mark it very low. And if a do, if a film doesn't get at least five, I don't bother. Uh, but I wanted to review it because I thought it was quite important. And I did look forward to it greatly, but I just felt so so disappointed and let down, especially after reading all the good scores and reading what it was about, etc. Before I was. I was looking forward to it. Perhaps that's part and parcel why I didn't like it as much as well. Sometimes if, if I don't know much about a film, I enjoy it. But with this one, I actually found it so... So, so I, what was it? The um, what did that critic say with the, sen the senses? Yeah, it's just just not my senses into a cocked eye. It just totally, totally didn't do anything for me. Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, I only ask one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.